This is the second of a series of videos on configuring the settings on your iPad. So to get started, go to settings. And in this video, in the general, tap the general. Uh, this one will concentrate on uh, auto lock, passcode lock, iPad cover lock, unlock, restrictions, and the use of the side switch. And check the uh, links in the notes for the previous videos on configuring settings. So let's start with auto lock. And at the moment, it's set for five minutes. And auto lock simply means how long the iPad will stay on before it goes to sleep. And if you tap on the minutes, there are the range of times that you can set before it turns off and saves the battery. And depending on how much you use your battery or how uh, long you want your battery to last for, if you select two minutes, then as soon as there is two minutes of inactivity, no taps detected, it'll just go to sleep. Um, never means it'll never turn off. The screen will always be on and you use your battery much quicker than usual. Uh, I'll leave mine on five because that seems to be a you know, happy medium for me, but that's sort of entirely up to you. But that's where you find it, auto lock. Passcode lock. If you want some security on your iPad, then you could set a lock, either a number, which is the passcode lock, or you could set a string of characters. If you want to turn it on, you need to tap passcode lock, and we'll go through all these options one by one, but let's just start with turning it on. Turn the passcode on, and then you need to put in four digits. That will be the passcode you need to get into your iPad. So I'll put in four characters or numbers, then in again to test that it's the same. And this is now locked. And when the iPad goes to sleep, so I'll just <laughs> press the, the sleep wake button and turn it off. Then when I turn it on again and I slide to unlock, immediately I have to put in my passcode only once to unlock it. Now, if we go back to the settings, the passcode lock, and every time you go into it, you have to put the code in so it can get a bit tiresome. But once it's on, you've got a, a, an option here to require a passcode. And at the moment, it's set to immediately. So as soon as um, I try to turn the iPod, iPad on, wake it out of its sleep, immediately I have to put that code in. Now, I could change that to different time limits. So say after five minutes, the passcode lock would need to be put in. And, what, and we'll go back to the settings. What that means is, is if I turn this back off and I'm turning it on again, waking it from sleep, I can actually go for five minutes before it's going to require me to put any password in. And if you haven't got your iPad and someone else has stolen it, then they can do a bit of damage in five minutes. So I like to leave mine if I have the lock on. Every time I make a change, I'm going to have to put the, the code back in. I leave mine at immediately. As soon as somebody tries to wake it from sleep, you need to put the code in. As it says here, shorter times are more secure. Back to the settings. Now, when you have got your passcode on, then there are some settings here that you want to, to be able to turn on or off to allow access when locked. So if you want to use your iPad as a picture frame, then you would leave this selected to on. So that if it was a, if it was asleep, you could uh, look at your, your slideshow without having to actually put a passcode in to unlock it. So if we leave that to on and then put it back to sleep and turn it on again, and the picture frame icon is here, I can start the slideshow of my images and I haven't put in a passcode. It'll, it'll bypass that. So the slideshow can continue. The iPad's still asleep. I don't have to put any uh, code in. And then I can just tap it to, to stop the slideshow. And as soon as I slide to unlock, I need to put the code back in. Now you do the same for Siri. So I go back into passcode lock, put the code back in. And I can do the same for Siri. If you have a new iPad, the iPad 3, which has Siri on it, Siri can be used without having to unlock the iPad. So if I leave that on, and I go again to turn off 
the iPad. To use Siri is a simple a matter of holding down the home key for a couple of seconds until it comes up. Launch notes. Try again. Launch notes. So I've got three applications that actually have notes. I'll just tap the one I want it. And before it actually opens the notes, I now have to put my code in. And it will open up notes. And it's effectively wake, waked, woken the iPad from sleep. So back into settings and into passcode lock. Uh, erase data. If I have this turned on and enable it, then if uh, I forget my passcode or someone else has got the iPad that isn't me and they they can have 10 attempts to, to get into that iPad and if they get the passcode wrong on the 11th attempt it will erase all the data so it's more data protection um, I tend to leave it off uh, the passcode that we're using is a simple passcode and you can see here require passcode immediately a simple passcode which is just the number uh, up here you can actually change your passcode so if you wanted to change the the number that you had in you could change it there um, but there is another type of passcode which might be a little easier to remember if you like le uh, characters rather than numbers so if you turn simple passcode off and enter in your existing passcode and then your new passcode will be a word and it can be letters and numbers so Put it in once, then I'll have to re enter it. And now my passcode is a more complex passcode. So if I again put the iPad to sleep, turn it on, and slide to unlock, then my, I get a keyboard because my passcode is a mixture of characters and letters. And return should be it. So if you're depending on how complex you want it to be, uh, passcode lock, you have to put it in again. So every time you access passcode, you've got to put it in. So it has got some security. Um, for me, I find it a total pain, so I'm going to turn it off. I don't have one on at all. But that's a bit of security, passcode. The iPad cover lock and unlock, if you have one of those smart covers that you can buy for your iPad, that has the magnets when you attach it. Uh, when you close that cover, that will trigger the lock and the unlock of your iPad. And if you have a smart cover and you have that turned to on, that will trigger that. As you close the, the cover, the iPad will turn off. When you open the cover, the iPad will turn on. Uh, as I don't have one, I leave it off. Uh, if I leave it on accidentally, I, I find that the iPad's always on. Just the, the slightest touch, it will come on. So I'd leave that off because I don't have one of those types of covers. Restrictions. This is another area where you might want to restrict use to either you or to other people in your home who might get access to your iPad and you want to stop them from using certain functions. So at the moment, restrictions to turn them on, again, requires a passcode, and it can be the same one as you've used for your other passcode if you want to. You only get numbers for this one. And that's now turned on the ability to disable certain things from happening. Now at the top here, you've got all these series of apps here that you can, uh, if we tap that on, if I t turn that to off, then Safari has no restrictions whatsoever. For Siri, for example, I can have explicit language allowable by keeping that on. If I turn that off, then explicit language would not be allowed on Siri. If you wanted to tell it to, to, to go and forth and multiply, uh, it wouldn't allow you if, if you use the other words. Um, I'll leave it on. It gives you the ability to allow what content you would like on your iPad. So for rating, so if you, particularly if you have kids or grandkids who might be using it, you can set the ratings for whatever country you have. I'm setting it for Australia. And uh, 
then you've got ratings like the G, for, uh, the G, the M, the X, whatever the ratings are, and, the, and then you can sort of uh, allow certain age groups access to various apps. For music and podcast, you can allow explicit language. So some podcasts, depending on what it is, would have some swearing in it, and if you don't want that to be available to anybody who uses your iPad, you would turn that off so that any podcast that is rated explicit would not be able to be used on your iPad because you've deliberately turned on that restriction. Uh, for movies, there's your ratings fa uh, factor there. So if you had uh, young kids, you could turn off uh, our, or our 18 plus. We want to allow, we want to allow movies, but we're only going to allow certain types of movies. So this, if I did, if I left it like that, only G, PG and M rated movies would be permitted to be downloaded and, and played. Or I can just turn it back on. Um, same for TV shows, you have ratings, sh schedules for books, explicit sexual content. So if you are looking in the iBook store and you're searching for books, any, any book you find can be downloaded as a sample where you don't have to pay. Now, if that book has explicit sexual content, then you might not want that to be permissible, so you would turn that off so that anybody searching the iBook store and found some books like that, they would not be able to download them at all because you've enabled that restriction. Same with the apps. Uh, the apps are all rated. When you go into the app store, the apps have a rating, and if you have young kids who don't want them access to uh apps which might have content or themes or concepts that aren't suitable, you can disallow it here. And in-app purchases particularly for kids because a lot of the apps are free, but as soon as you download them, you only get a little portion of it that's free. And then if you want to extend the pleasure of the game, you have to buy things, you have to buy little packs, and that's an in-app purchase. And, it's, and you don't often need the password to do it the way iTunes is set up. You can just say, yes, I'm going to buy that pack, and it downloads immediately. If you want to stop kids from doing that or you can't trust yourself, turn that off, and then all in-app purchases are disallowed. Uh, the same for the requiring the password. How uh, frequently do you need to have the password to actually buy apps immediately, or will you allow 15 minutes of um, time. So if I go into the app store, I download an app, I have to put my password in. But the way I've got it set here at the moment, it gives me 15 minutes where I do not have to put that password in again. So someone can come along or, or I couldn't keep downloading app after app after app because the credit card's attached to the iTunes account so you don't need to need any money virtually. Uh, if I set it to immediately, then as soon as I download one app, and I want to download another app, it's going to ask me for my password again. So it's a bit of a safeguarding measure. Um, privacy in restrictions. Uh, and a lot of these apps will use your contacts or your calendars or your reminders, your photos. They'll use the content in those apps to help them run their, their app. So if we went into contacts, at the moment, the apps that I've got installed, I have Skype and a couple of other video sharing apps that use the contacts to help me manage who I talk to. And at the moment, I've only allowed Skype access to my content contacts app, but I could allow all of these. It depends on how much privacy you want and how comfortable you are with those apps accessing it. Uh, if you really want a good experience with Skype, for example, then you, it makes sense to be able to use your contacts app where all you, you, uh, the people you want to talk to are. Same with calendars. There's a lot of um, apps that will use uh, the calendar and you will, and by saying allow changes, you allow those apps to make changes to your calendar. So add an event to your calendar. If you say don't allow changes, then some apps will just not be able to work as well. There's a Advantages and disadvantages. Uh, photos, for example, these are all the apps here that use my Photos app. They might put photos there. They might uh, take folders from there. So I can take folders from my Photos app and send them off to Facebook because I've allowed Facebook that interaction. Uh, 
same with Facebook. Facebook is on. I want Facebook to be able to interact with the information on my iPad. If I said off, then I really haven't got any interaction with Facebook at all between the iPad and the Facebook application. So you got to decide here how much privacy you want and how much um, privacy you, you select will depend then on the experience you get with the apps that use it. Too much privacy can really destroy your experiences. Allow changes in accounts. Uh, so you want to be able to lock down your mail accounts, for example. So don't don't have anybody who's just using your iPad. So some someone who's over as a guest in your house is having a play on your iPad. You don't want them to be able to add a mail account or modify your account or add or move something out of your calendar. You would have that set to don't allow changes. Uh, and then no one else can do it. The volume limit. Um, you can set the volume limit to be at a certain level and not to go as high as possible. And you do that in the sound setting. And you can also make sure that you set the sound to the level that you want and no one can change it. In a lot of these, I think you just have to, to play with it and, and see what it does. Game Center, if you use the Game Center app and you want to be able to play games with many other players online, then you'd set that to on. Uh, adding friends, so this is, again is some Thing that's quite uh, important for young kids if they're using the iPad and you don't want them to be able to play a game and be able to add friends that they don't know to play games with them because often those games will have a chat module as well. Uh, you can turn that off so that they can't add friends but they might be able to play multiplayer games with people they don't know. They can't go too wrong with that. There's quite a lot in, in privacy and, and restrictions that you've really got to look at very, very closely. And if you want to set any restriction, then it has to be turned on. If I want to turn it off, I can disable restrictions. And so they're off now. Nothing's restricted. It's all off. it's all working. It's off, as you can see. Um, the side switch, there is a side switch at the uh, top on mine. Depends on how you, the, the, the location and of the way you've got your, your iPad um, displayed, portrait or landscape. But you can decide whether you want the side switch to be used for either locking the rotation of the iPad. So if you put it into landscape view, you can lock it into landscape view or portrait view. Or you can use the side switch to trigger the mute button. And uh, if you go into the multitasking bar, so swipe four fingers up, or the other way to do it is to press the home button twice, which will also get you into it, and scroll across to your left. The uh, screen button on the, the left there, at the moment I've set my side lock rotation to um, lock the screen. So that means this button down here becomes my mute button. If I touch that, it will mute. So if you've got no sound and, you've, and your volume control is up to high, but you've still got no sound, it may be that you've actually turned it on to mute. I don't want that on mute because I've set my and go tap the screen to go back, go back into settings. I've set my lock rotation to or my side switch, side switch to lock rotation. If I want to mute it, I can hold the volume control and that's up high there. And if I want to hold it the other way and just hold it down, that mutes it also. It has the same effect. Um, that's all for this video. The next video will be looking at accessibility.